Brrrah! Range test, GoPro Hero 11. Right now you're watching me on a GoPro Hero 9. I was gonna use the 9 to watch the 11, but I'm not gonna use the 9 to watch the 11 because I need to watch, use the Hero 10 to watch the Hero 11. So this is gonna be the setup for the range test. We got these bad boys right here. We got the Rode Wireless Go 2, all right? Hooked up to the Hero 10. We got the Hero 11 right here. And we got the GoPro remote. The GoPro remote, I'm going to have it on my person and I'm going to just be stepping away. We're gonna measure the parking spots because I'm gonna use the parking spots as the foot to let you guys know how many feet exactly this remote works from. If you guys haven't seen the DJI Action 4 with the remote, get over there. I got it in the description below. I did a range test as well as a couple of little how to get the telemetry data from the camera to your actual device, whatever you're gonna use to edit your videos. So um, without further ado, let's go measure some parking spots and let's see how far this remote works. Got a whole parking spot. We're gonna start it from the middle of the line. Walk it down. Nine feet. Okay, we got the camera set up. The Hero 10 is looking at the Hero 9. I mean, the Hero 10 is looking at the Hero 11. We got the GoPro remote. We're gonna make sure we're hooked up to the correct camera. Okay, I'm gonna use this mode button to cycle through the different camera modes. And as you guys can see, as I'm pressing it, the Hero 11 is responding. All right, now we're connected. We're at 13 parking spaces, so nine times 13. That's solid how far you can go on and guess line of sight, how far the GoPro is going to work with the remote. That's pretty far, guys. That's pretty damn far. We'll go to 14. We got photo. 14 parking spots, travel laps, okay. Your max effective range ended up being 117 feet of line of sight range. You guys are getting lower, why? Maybe because the camera is too heavy for the tripod that I have it on? What up y'all, it's your boy Jay on the Segway. Today's video, I wanna show you guys the GoPro and the GoPro remote, okay? For this video, we're gonna use the Hero 11. Now, you don't need to use the Hero 11 to use this remote. You can use this remote with the Hero 11, the Hero 10, Mr. 9, okay? Um, this remote does not discriminate within those three models. I believe you can use it with the Hero 8. I'm not 100% sure. I just double checked. It's from Hero 8 to Hero 11 and probably even 12. I'm pretty sure they're not going to come out with a new remote. And if they do, it's probably an updated version of this, which they need to because this one right here, as you guys can see, it doesn't rotate. So when you put it on your wrist, right, I'm not able to like rotate it. Insta360 has a remote. Looks very similar to GoPros, by the way, but theirs can rotate. This video is coming out on this remote with the Insta360 camera. So if you guys wanna see that, subscribe, okay? And when I put those videos out, you guys will get to see how that one behaves. But um, this one right here, the oh, this is the old one, by the way. So if you have like a Hero 7, I believe this works with the Hero 8 also, but this is GoPro's older version of the remote. Let's go on ahead and get the light on that a little better. It actually looks kinda cool, like how it has a GoPro logo on it. But um, yeah, we're not talking about that right now. How do you get the telemetry data from your GoPro to the GoPro app? That's a process. I don't even know if I wanna do that kind of a video, but <laughs> facts. What I like about this remote is you can connect it to multiple cameras at a time. You can also save multiple cameras to this remote. So I can even turn the GoPro on with this remote. The only thing guys, if you take the battery, we got the 11, I had it hooked up to the 11 last, right? If you take the battery out of the GoPro while having them connected to each other and change it with a fresh one, 
I, they lose their automatic connectivity. When I turn this remote on, which is what I'm gonna do right now, I haven't taken the battery out of the GoPro. So now it's on, it found the GoPro already. If you guys wanna see, so I'm gonna press the record button and it should fire up this GoPro instantly and start recording. Or fire it up. Oh no, it's recording now. You guys can see. You press the power, you press the record button, and it'll turn it off. Now, if you guys want to just turn the camera on, you look on the side. I need to get this light closer. You look on the side, you got two buttons. You got the is it a wrench? Yeah, you got the little wrench, which is a settings button, and you have a mode button. You want to press the mode button, just press it while it's on this screen and it fires the GoPro on. With that, you can go on ahead and scroll through different options. So there's two ways to scroll through options with this remote. Pressing the settings button on the side and pressing this. This one opens up the menu, like the general options. This one will scroll, you guys can see, this one will scroll through the different camera modes. No, this one will give you sub options and this one on the bottom, the mode button, will scroll through the different camera modes. So I'm gonna press the mode button so you guys see what I'm talking about. You see, now it's on photo, time-lapse, and for video. Those are the three general recording modes, okay? This one is the sub menu, the little wrench. That one gives you the sub menus. So we're in record mode right now and I have different settings. now. So you guys have an idea on what I'm even talking about. Here's the GoPro itself, right? If I press the power button on the side of the GoPro, it'll do the same thing. Scroll through the different uh, video recording modes, right? Which one we're on? Video. But you see right here in the middle, you see where it says what resolution? If you press that, there's your sub menus. Going back to the remote, guys, if you press this wrench, It'll take you through the sub menus. You can see all the different, and then you use the up and down. These are gonna be up and down buttons now, right? For which one you wanna do. With that being said, you have to mesmerize which camera mode, like what settings is for which one. So you got standard on this one, I'm gonna press it. You got standard full frame activity cinematic you have to kind of mesmerize what those are the actual remote will show you what they are you guys can see it'll show you it'll say what it is you just have to remember what settings is um, connected to which selection you want to actually select this is probably the most powerful remote of all the cameras of the insta 360 of the dji i would say this one is the most powerful and if you press the power button on the top we're going to press the power button first of all we're going to you see it says connect to pair new orientation like you could change everything with this remote when it comes to your gopro some people wonder, well, why does GoPro cost more than DJI? And it's it's all these little things you get with GoPro products that um that works. When it comes to the remote, once again, guys, and you want to select things, anything you want to select, you press the record button. The record button selects whatever is highlighted. Okay. And like I said, it just it just does everything. And if you want to just turn the camera off, you remember this little mode button on the bottom? You just hold it down. Now the GoPro's off. Okay. And then if you turn the remote off, you just hold down the power button, and the remote turns off. Cons. There are some cons with this remote. One of the cons is no backlight. That may or may not be important to you, but if you're like moto vlogging, for example, I was using this remote to do a test. What test exactly? I was doing a telemetry data test between all three types of cameras using their remotes. The GoPro has a GPS module built in, so you do not need to do that with the GoPro. But if you want to see the settings on how to get the GPS, you're gonna. I'm gonna just turn the GoPro on with the remote. Mode on first. 
it's going to look for the camera it's going to find the camera that was last synchronized to it as long as the camera was turned on not too long ago you hold down this mode button on the bottom of the remote you hold it down it'll and it'll turn the camera on all right so we shouldn't be recording i'm going to pull down going to go to the left preferences and you're going to go to gen you up oh, there we go gps and you want to make sure it's on if you don't want gps turn it on now one of the reasons one of the contributing factors to gopro having such crappy uh battery life is that gps chip a lot of people don't realize that gopro most people don't that's on by default by the way um, when you have that on the gopro is constantly looking for gps signal this is something that the other cameras don't suffer from because they have remotes to to give them gps data gopro has a built-in if you want to use your gopro and you don't need gps data meaning you know speed elevation slope uh, uh route it'll it's all kind of things you can add to your video if you don't need that turn that gps off your battery sh your battery should last a little longer and your gopro shouldn't overheat as easily easy either it will still overheat because it, it has a powerful processor in it it's just what it is okay um these are action cameras if you're using it in an action type of scenario it shouldn't overheat it shouldn't unless you're in really really hot conditions so without with that being said um if you don't need gps data turn the gps off guys all right you Let's have the gopro logo on the on the band and stuff like that um you do have a, a you know little holes for a lanyard it's it's very comfortable it's a very comfortable to wear a remote it just doesn't i just wish it rotated it does have water and dust proof ratings so you see the little the little uh, rubber tab on the bottom okay you, you pull it off and you got the USB-C for charging. Um, GoPro did incorporate that little nipple there. You guys see that little nipple on, on the cover? It goes in that little hole, so you know it doesn't just pop open. You can kind of, you can kind of press it in the hole, and it keeps this tab closed. So if you are moto vlogging, riding a bicycle, skiing, or whatever, you can use this remote safely. You don't have to worry about um, it getting damaged from from water. You have to submerge this thing in water for it to get damaged. Um, that's 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 all I got for the remote. Um, do I want to show you guys how to get the telemetry data? Like, do you guys really want to see that? Hmm. All right, fuck it. You only live once. What I like about these GoPros and Action Threes and Insta Three Sixties is everything is relatively easy to do okay it's, it's it's just simple you just need a cell phone or a tablet some cases you need a laptop or a, a computer i'm going to tell you guys how to do it with an android device because that's what i use so this is from an android's perspective okay you want to go to your app store and you want to type in quick q u i k and then you go on ahead and you'll look it'll say gopro quick video editor you want to go on and download that. I have it downloaded already, so it just says open, but you want to go on ahead and download it. Once it gets downloaded, it's going to give you a whole bunch of prompts. And this is the point where you're going to go on and turn your camera on. Once it's all done, go on and click on GoPro on the bottom right, and it'll find your camera. Once you find your camera, you'll turn it on. You're basically just following prompts. Because I have my camera already synchronized to the app, I don't need to find it, it won't find it. So I'm gonna click tap to power on once I identify which camera it is that I want to turn it on. And you see the Bluetooth button, go on and hit that. And then just wait for it. Now you're gonna click on view media. And it'll automatically connect to your camera and it'll show you all the videos you have on your camera. So you're gonna go on ahead and find a video, select it, if you know you have telemetry data because you've recorded with the GPS on, then you go on to select that video. And then on the bottom in the middle, there's an arrow pointing at the line. That's what you wanna press. You're gonna press that button on the very bottom in the middle and that will start to download your video. It'll say high performance video, blah, blah, blah. And you go and let it download. That's one way to do it. And so if you guys don't wanna do it wirelessly, there is another way you wanna get your 
SD card reader, a high speed one will be preferable. I can show you the ones that I use. It's a U green version. And you want to get a USB C to USB female adapter cable. That way you can plug the USB male end of the U green SD card reader into the female end of the adapter and then take the male end of the USB side of the adapter and plug it into your Android device. Once you get that all plugged up, if you look at the very top of your screen, you're gonna pull down, do the pull down menu. You see where it says USB storage added, you're gonna click on that. And now these are all the files that I have on my GoPro SD card. Usually DCIM is the storage file, okay? And then you look for 100 GoPro. And then these are where all your videos and photos and stuff is gonna be at. So let me see, I'm gonna find me a video that has, I'm pretty sure has telemetry data on it. Uh, let's see, let's try 862. I'm gonna hold my finger down, I'm gonna pick this video. I'm gonna hold my finger down on 862. I'm gonna press copy, cause I don't wanna move it from the GoPro. I wanna just copy it, cause I wanna show you guys how to do this. So now I press copy. If you look on the top left corner, you see that little folder with a house in it? next to, to the left of USB storage one. I'm gonna press on that. I'm gonna click internal storage. And then basically right here is your internal storage files. You can select, like if you look, press those three buttons on the top right corner next to the little hourglass, you can create a folder, okay? I've created a folder and I named it GoPro. However, I went to download first, that way I know it's in a section where I've downloaded a video from, right? And then I wrote GoPro stuff. So I'm gonna select this file, this folder to save this file. And on the bottom right, I'm gonna press copy here. And this is hella faster, way faster than downloading wirelessly. Now, when you guys are recording with your GoPros, my recommendation, okay, this is just my recommendation. Turn the GoPro on first, before you even use the quick capture, turn it, just turn the GoPro on. Be outside when you turn the GoPro on. Allow the GoPro to find signal. Give it 30 seconds, give it a minute. You don't need to usually use more than a minute or 45 seconds. 30 to 45 seconds, just leave the GoPro outside. Allow it to find your GPS signal. If you do not do this, if the GoPro does not find the GPS signal, you will not have telemetry data as an option. Now, how do you find telemetry data? You guys see the file is saved, all right? It is on my internal storage of my device. So I'm gonna completely back out of this. I'm gonna look and find my quick app, right? GoPro quick, and here we are. Now on the very bottom left, you see it? It says media, you wanna click on media. And it's like, oh my gosh, I got a whole bunch of videos. How do I find my video? Well, on the very top here, just, you see, it usually starts off an app right and this is what i was telling you guys gopro will save the same files twice between getting them off your camera to your device and then editing them in the app and then saving it to your device so you always want to make sure you have twice the amount of space available on your device from what you've recorded because we didn't use the app to download it wirelessly because if you download it wirelessly all the videos you've downloaded will be right here in this app section you see it's highlighted with the app with the blue line under the word app we're going to go to phone because i've saved it directly to my phone with the sd card reader and on the very top here you can see all the different folder types so i'm looking for Go gopro stuff there we go and there's the video so i'm going to press the video just once and here's your screen this is where you're going to get it's going to get juicy the little pencil on the bottom left or pen looks like a pencil to me you press that and here's all the options we're not gonna i'm not gonna get into all the options that'll be a long video i'm just looking for stickers this is where the telemetry data is guys press stickers and boom now the thing about the gopro app is you cannot place these wherever you want you're going to use the four corners of your video and as to where you can put anything so every time you press if i'm going to press speedometer every time i press it is gonna move it to one of the four corners, top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. You press it a fifth time, disappears. So I usually go that way. I, I like to put my, my uh, speedometer on a bottom right. Now here's something that you get with the GoPro uh, app. This is what you get that you don't get with the others. This will actually show you the Google Maps. Whatever device you're using, as long as it is hooked up to the internet, it, the grid coordinates that are saved into the file of the video, 
I told you guys, GoPro does a lot of processing inside that camera. That's why it gets hot. That's why your batteries don't last as long, okay? Um, look at it. It's showing you exactly. You can see a Google Map image of where exactly this was recorded. Is that even Google Maps or is that like Navi Star or something? Anyways, you can see exactly where. If you want to have that type of stuff in your video, go for it. Then I click on Path. And see, it shows you the outline. I'm going to get path on out of here. I just wanted you guys to see what it looked like. We got the speed chart. So if you don't want to have just a speedometer, you want to use the speed chart. You can see exactly when you accelerate it, when you deaccelerate it, et cetera, et cetera. And it'll show you the speedometer on the top right. I'm going to get that up out of here as well. We got altitude and G-force. Altitude obviously is going to tell you the elevation. You can see it'll give you a chart on your elevation. Okay. And G-force obviously self-explanatory. It'll show you the G-forces. If you're in a car, you'll 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 definitely see the G-forces. You don't really see them on a motorcycle, but you know, once you're done with all of that, you press the check button on the bottom right. Like I said, there's other options you can you can do. This not it's not for this video. Then you press save. And then actually, if you want to save it to the app so that you can edit it later, or if you want to save it to your phone, pick a poison. All right, peoples. So that's how you get the telemetry data off your GoPro to your actual Android device. With the Apple, if you know how to work your, 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 your iOS system, if it's the Apple, if you know how to work it, I think you'll be able to follow this tutorial and you, you, you guys should be able to uh, navigate your way just looking at my video on how to do it with your device, okay? Um, GoPro, it, there's a lot of power involved with the, with the GoPros. You, you, you pay more money, but that's where your money goes. It's just a little more professional, uh, you know, than the others. Um, but you can use them all professionally. Does that make sense? You guys saw how much detail is in the, um, the remote the camera, the app, um, a lot of powerful features, you know, going on there. So, um, if you guys like the video, man, hit the subscribe. I mean, hit the like button, subscribe. If you want to subscribe, like I said, the Insta 360 is next. The, uh, DJI's video is in the description below. I did this kind of same exact test with the DJI action four, because the action four is the only one that the, uh, the GPS remote will work with. It doesn't work with the Action 3. I'm sorry, guys. The Action 3 does have a remote, though, that you can use to work with it. Just won't get any telemetry data. Um, that's all I got, man. See you guys in the next video. Peace. Be kind. Stay nice. Say something nice to somebody. Do something good for somebody today, okay? Be nice. Do something cool. Let me know what you did. You did something nice for somebody? Put it in the comments below. Um, if you guys have any questions, Put it in the comments below. I'm good at getting back to you guys with answers and stuff. So, um, all right, I'm out of here, man. Peace.